he did not want to learn French language. He was a Frenchman, but he didn't want to learn French. He was dressed in the best dress of Sunday. He had frilled long green coat. There was a big crowd near the bulletin board. So he was wondering what is wrong? What news has come today? What has happened? Uh, I just want to know. He was very curious to know what was happening there. There were orders from Berlin that uh, French will not be taught anymore in the schools. A very warm welcome to all the young minds there. Bonjour. Hola. Kamate volu. Kakwa zaut. Why am I talking all these? What does all these mean? Yes, there is a reason that I spoke in foreign language. That is because there is a connection between our first lesson and the last lesson. What is it all about? Yes, come on, let us have a peek into what we are going to understand. So today we are going to have a session about the first lesson in our CBSE class 12 curriculum. So warm welcome to all the young minds of class 12 CBSE. I am Dr. Shalini, your prep school English teacher. So let us now have a peep into what we are going to understand in today's session. Yes, what are the contents in today's session? We are going to understand about the author first, then we will be understanding the background to the story. Yes, today's story should be given a background because we must understand why that situation has happened there. Okay, so we will understand the background of the story, then we will know the summary of the story, what we are going to learn. Then at last we are going to understand the new phrases or new words that we have come across in this story. Okay, so let us start our journey. Yes, come on. So at the outset, we need to learn about the author first. Okay, so Alphonse Dodded is the author of this lesson and he is a French novelist. Okay, he wrote in French language and he is a French novelist. He has uh, written innumerable works. He wrote novels, he wrote novellas. You know what a novella is? Novellas are short novels. Okay, so he has written novels, he has written novellas, he has written short stories and a few poems also. In his novels and poems, we can see utmost patriotism towards his country, okay? So patriotism is one of the main themes. He has written short stories. Also, uh, this is one such example that the last lesson is also one such example wherein patriotism is completely filled there in this short story, okay? So then he is a monarchist like he was utmost patriot. He respected the monarchism of whatever uh, ruling was going on, okay? He was also the opponent of French Republic. He opposed the government government practice okay so he was favorable to the he liked the king's rule that is why monarchist okay so then he has written numerous works in french language many of them have been translated to other languages also so this is all about the author alphonse dodded so let us now get into the text that is the summary of the text what we are going to the short story what we are going to learn today okay so let us begin our first lesson the name of which is last lesson okay so i'm just giving you a background to the story so this uh, situation takes place during the franco prussian war that means there was a war that was going on between france and prussia Okay, so Prussia had occupied these parts, okay, Germany, Poland and parts of Austria were, were there in Prussia, okay. So later on, France was actually defeated by Prussia. So this story takes place in the initial days of France being occupied by Prussia. So when does it start? It starts when the districts of Alsace and Lorraine, the French districts, Alsace and Lorraine were occupied by Prussia. Okay, so initially the war between this Ukraine and Russia, like one by one the districts are being occupied, right? So similarly, the France country was completely was not occupied at once. One by one the districts were occupied. So this takes place, the story takes place in one of the districts of this Alsace and 
uh, Lorraine. Okay, so that is the setting. And what does the story tell us about? This story actually tells us about what effect this defeat has on the school life when uh, the other country uh, occupies or uh, seizes the other districts of other countries. So what will happen that time? How does it affect? It affects each and every small unit of the society. Okay, so here, how does it affect the school? Is what is shown in this story okay so now we are entering the school of one of the characters named Franz in this story okay so let us start our session we will now get into the summary okay so Franz is the protagonist of the story what is protagonist uh, protagonist is the hero okay you call him as the hero or you also call him as the protagonist okay so he is the protagonist or Hero. Okay, both are synonyms. Okay, so Franz is the protagonist of the story. He is a boy who is fun loving. Okay, he didn't want to go to school. Okay, most of you do this, right? So many of you do not want to go to school, but still you manage to go to school. So Franz also uh, one of uh, such uh, children. He didn't want to go to school, but somehow he managed to go. He was unwillingly going to school. The main uh, thing he did not like in school was learning of French. Okay, the learning of French language. He did not want to learn French language. He was a Frenchman, but he didn't want to learn French. Fine. So he was going to school, but he did not uh, learn participles that day. Okay. So that day his teacher, Herman was supposed to ask him, question him about participles, but he had not learned it. Okay, so like you also might be, uh, some of you might be doing this, right? You haven't done the homework, then you don't want to go to school or somehow you find ways in which you can escape from going to school or maybe getting into that person, the teacher's class, isn't it? So similarly, this boy also, he didn't want to go to school, but somehow he uh, made up his mind to go to school. Fine, what does he do? He just wanted to enjoy beauty of nature. He loved nature. He just wanted to stroll. He just wanted to enjoy sunshine. He wanted to enjoy the chirping of birds. Then he wanted to go to the woods. Okay, woods in the sense, forest. Okay, then he wanted to uh, see that uh, Prussian soldiers who were drilling. All these he wanted to enjoy. What do you get in your mind? Yes, Tare Zameen Par. Yes, this boy was similar to that, the protagonist, the hero of that movie. Okay, Ishan, right? So he was also that kind of, he misses the school and goes and wanders around and comes back. Do you remember? Yes, this boy also had similar characters. So he wanted to enjoy nature. He just wanted to go out and have fun. But what did he do? He still resisted doing that. Somehow he resisted his mind. Okay, he said no. We are not going out. I am just going back to school. That is what he tells his mind. And with difficulty, he just resists his uh, uh, wills and he just goes back to school. Fine. Then what happens? He just gets into the uh, school and he sees the bulletin board. So every day there used to be hustle bustle in the school. So everybody used to run from here and here to there. Then they used to move the benches and all the sound of benches. All these, some bell ringing, everything used to happen. All the sounds used to be there. But today what is happening? There was a big crowd near the bulletin board. So he just uh, saw what is there in the bulletin board. He, he just recalled all the things. All the bad news means uh, when Prussia occupies France, right? So all that bad news had come in this bulletin board only. He had very bad opinion about the uh, memory, about the bulletin board fine so the, all the bad news all the lost battles everything was there and all the drafts and all which were supposed to be what and all information has to be given to the students all that was supposed to be here only fine so all the orders of the commanding officers reached here so today there was a big crowd near the bulletin board so he was wondering what is wrong what news has come today what has happened uh, i just want to know he was very curious to know what was happening there so few of them who were already standing there made fun of him uh, he was already late to school right uh, but uh, he was in fact he was running to, to reach his classroom but one of the people who were standing who was near that uh, uh, bulletin board right one of the persons uh, teased him like don't run because you'll reach the class very early he says then he was thinking what is wrong 
uh, I'm already late to school. Now, why is he telling me that I'm going to reach early? He was literally baffled, okay? He was literally confused. He didn't know what to do. So he was thinking, why is the classroom so quiet? Why is the school so quiet? I just wanted to take cover of, under the cover of uh, all this noise, I just wanted to go and reach my classroom. Because every day, like you just imagine when the whole class is quiet and you go late and you enter the classroom, you feel so embarrassed, right? You don't, like everybody will be looking at you. Why is this person late and all so in everybody's mind one or the other thought will be going on right so he also felt the same I should have reached classroom by now he thinks but still he somehow manages to go there he enters the garden so there he reaches and he somehow manages to enter the school so he is noticing all the changes that are going on in the school so he is very confused what is going on he is not able to understand what is there Fine. So instead of these noisy classrooms, everything was quiet, silence, okay, like pin drop silence, like somebody uh, has uh, died and there is a, a utmost silence, right? So that type of silence was there. And it was Sunday morning, as quiet as Sunday morning. So Sunday morning, usually you will see, right, uh, there will be no, not much of hustle bustle, but here it was something different, okay? So Sunday morning, that much of silence was there. Fine. Then the teacher doesn't scold him when he enters the class. He thought of entering into the classroom uh, with under the cover of noise, but here it is not there. All the classmates were already sitting in their places. So he just peeps in from the window. He sees everybody sitting in their places. Somehow he manages to enter the classroom. So he enters, then the teacher is uh, Teacher usually would have scolded him, but today he says, okay, Franz, we were about to begin without you. See, so please go to sit in your, take your seat, he says. So Franz is even now confused now. How come the teacher hasn't scolded me? When I saw him through the window, he was uh, already ready with the iron uh, bar that was there with him, uh, who used to punish uh, students. But now he's not doing anything. He didn't even scold me. So what is wrong? What Something is wrong. Something is going on here, he thinks. And he wanted to know what it is. So what happens next? So next, let us see. So the teacher was dressed in his Sunday's best dress. So what was he dressed in? He was dressed in the best dress of Sunday. He had frilled long green coat. He had the hat and also everything. So he used to wear such clothes. There was some prize distribution or maybe some special event in the school. But today he had worn that. So what special? So when he notices the teacher, he feels yes. Something special is there. Something different is happening today. So he was confused. All that is going on in his mind. What has happened? What is wrong? What is going on? Everything is going on in his mind. So what does he do next? Next, he just observes the whole classroom. Now he sees all the villagers had occupied the last benches. He is even more confused now. Even the villagers had occupied the last benches. So why did the villages occupy the last benches. Mr. Hamel was actually teaching here for 40 years. From 40 years, he was there. Okay, his service was there in that school for 40 years. So now, all the villagers also had come. One person had brought an old uh, book to study also. So he is observing what is going on. All the villagers also have come to the last bench. These people had studied in this school only. Now they have come here. Why have they come here? Why have they occupied the last bench here? Why is the class populated? Why is the whole class so quiet? What is wrong today? What is the speciality of this day? So many things running in Francis mind. So then what happens? So uh, like it was actually to pay tribute to uh, Mr. Hamill. Okay. So that 40 years of service, as I told you. So since the uh, school began, the 40 years uh, service he had uh, put in there. So for that, as a mark of respect, all these people were present there. Okay. So then Hamill makes an announcement. Okay. So now everybody is quiet. Franz is also settled in the class. Mr. Hamill makes an announcement in the class. Okay. So what was the announcement? This would be the last French lesson. So Franz was confused. Why last French lesson? Tomorrow onwards, are we not learning French? What is wrong? He thinks. So uh, Mr. Hamill gives the reason also. So what was the reason? There were orders from Berlin that uh, French will not be taught anymore in the schools. So then Franz relates this to the bulletin board. So there was already a crowd near the bulletin board. So people were reading that news there. There were orders from Berlin. Okay, so that was put up in the bulletin board that 
uh, French will not be taught. Instead, German will be taught in the schools. Okay. So as I told you, let us go back to the background for a while. So as I told you, what are the changes that happens in the school uh, when uh, uh, another country occupies a country is what I said. Okay. So now uh, Prussia has occupied uh, France. So now there should be change in the language also. So now what is French deprived of? France is actually deprived of the mother tongue. Okay. So they cannot practice their mother tongue they cannot speak their mother tongue they cannot learn their mother tongue also okay so how bad you feel right you stay in a particular state or country and you are deprived of speaking your own language is that even possible so that is not at all possible right being in a country you are not learning the uh, official language of that country or your mother tongue then that is really saddening Okay, so the same thing will happen here also now. So now this was the last French lesson. So all of a sudden, uh, France realizes that this was the news they were reading in the bulletin board. So I didn't pay attention. So there also he has not paid attention to the news. So then what happens? France then realizes he does not know his own mother tongue. So France now realized that he has not learned French. He doesn't know his mother tongue. So what a pathetic condition he is in, isn't it? It is really saddening that France doesn't know his own mother tongue. Okay, so now what happens next? So he regrets at the last moment, he regrets, why didn't he learn French? He should have done it before. So what happens? There was a tendency in the people of uh, areas which were occupied by Prussia that, let us do it tomorrow, the procrastination uh, mindset. Okay, so that was there in the people of France. So Mr. Hamill actually talks about that also. So hadn't France procrastinated? Procrastination means postponing of work. Okay, hadn't uh, France postponed his learning of French, he would have learned it by now. He would have been thorough with usage of French. But now he hasn't done it. So now he doesn't know his mother tongue. So now what happens next? Let us see here. So he also realizes many things. Okay, He realizes he doesn't know his mother tongue. He also feels that he shouldn't have postponed his learning. So then what happens? He also realizes why the teacher was dressed in his Sunday's best and why the villagers had already come and occupied place in the last benches. Okay, So this was what Franz realizes. One by one, things start sinking into his mind. He starts digesting things. Okay, So once he realizes, he starts developing a sudden love towards the teacher. Just imagine you being in a situation wherein you don't like a teacher of your school. All of a sudden, she or he would uh, leave the school, was, is about to leave the school. Then uh, you feel that, yes, I shouldn't have done this. Somewhere you feel it, right? Uh, until and unless you hate that person, you don't feel it, okay? But otherwise you feel, yes, I shouldn't have done this. I shouldn't have done this to her. Maybe you have teased that teacher and you feel that I shouldn't have done this. Yes, one or two might have experienced this, okay? So Franz also experiences this. Okay, so he starts feeling, no, I should have, you feel like you should go back in the timeline and you have to change those things. Franz also felt the same thing. He regrets that he doesn't know this language. He should have done it before is what he feels. Okay, so now Hamill tells him, he realizes that who are the people to blame for this procrastination? Okay, who are the ones who should be blamed? That is the children, the people who used to attend the classes, the children who used to attend the classes, they are supposed to be blamed first because they do not have interest to come to school. And what is the reason for that? The parents have to be blamed, okay? Parents also have to be blamed. Why is that? Because they don't inculcate interest in their children. They have to boost, their, they have to motivate their children to go and learn in the school, right? So this is what he says. The children are first to be blamed. The parents are the second level to be blamed. And at last, he himself is supposed to be blamed. So why is that? Why is a teacher to be blamed? Okay. Now the teacher feels uh, these three are supposed to be blamed because the children have lost respect. Okay. So he was the reason for losing respect, regard for the mother tongue. Regard means respect again. Okay. So Children do not have respect towards the mother tongue because children do not have interest. 
parents do not motivate them and teacher is also responsible because he has not taught them with such a sincerity he feels he has been in the school for 40 years but still he feels he is also one of the reasons for not being able to teach them properly for not being able to bring that love in them to learn that language okay so that is what he says so he just gives a hint also he just advises them like the love towards the mother tongue has to be there so mother tongue has to be very close to heart means you should love your mother tongue because it is like a key to the prison of slavery okay so means you love your mother tongue that means you learn it okay if you learn it you will start speaking it isn't it so if you start speaking it it is like whenever somebody else occupies whenever some other country occupies your country then you need not have to listen to whatever they say you have your own language and they cannot change you from that okay so that is you cannot be complete slaves to those people okay so now he asks uh, france to recite the participles okay everybody was reading then they were practicing everything so they had other uh, lessons also that day school had started with french language so then everybody was asked a question and france also was asked a question about participles because that day they were supposed to learn participles okay so france also was asked participles he wanted to prove himself he wanted to show that he also has interest towards the lesson uh, he wanted to impress the teacher so what he does he uh, just tries to uh, prove himself at the last minute he wanted to show what he has learned so he thinks that he can do it and he uh, just uh, starts telling about the participles but initially only he just uh, uh, gets confused and he stops he doesn't uh, tell the uh, answer properly so that time uh, mr hamel says see you are not to be blamed okay your parents are to be blamed first because first thing is you don't have interest second thing is your parents have already decided to put you into work so obviously you will not come to school and study they will have other plans they have already decided something for you that means you will also go in that line only they will also work in that line you will also start going in that line only so you have already chosen your path then what is the use of me teaching you okay that means i am not sincere in teaching you i am not able to bring you from that way out he says okay another reason he says that i am also one of the reasons as he told here he himself is supposed to be blamed so in francis case also he feels he is also one of the people to be blamed why because hamel used to send france to water his plants okay he used to call him and ask him to water his plants okay then also whenever uh, mr hamel used to go for fishing he used to declare holiday for the children so he feels he is not sincere in his teaching okay because the teacher wanted to go out he had declared holiday for students also okay so this is what makes him feel that he was not sincere in his work and also he feels even he had contributed for their disrespect towards the language okay so he had asked france to water his plants that is one of the reasons he declaring holiday for his uh, fun entertainment so that is also another reason what he feels his contribution towards the disrespect so all that he speaks then finally he is very dejected uh, mr hamel is very dejected so after this uh, participles he just teaches uh, the last lesson whatever he had to teach that day he delivers that and surprise of uh, everyone and also france particularly he had understood whatever mr hamel had taught that day okay perfectly he had understood and he was he started feeling bad even more because how much ever interest he had put in that day whatever respect he had shown towards the teacher was not at all shown in any of the classes previously okay so the interest he had lost but today he has shown lot of interest the concentration what he had given made him understand the complete lesson properly okay so now he starts feeling that this teacher should not go away from here at the same time when they were reciting all these lessons right so that time they were able to hear some of the noise that was going on upstairs okay the sister of mr hamel was packing the uh, things there that they have to leave the country the next day right because the orders have come and french was no more taught here so they had to leave the country so what happens she was actually packing and all that he was able to hear okay so now he is feeling even more bad now okay so then what happens he was actually very dejected so the atmosphere of class was completely different today so the teacher was teaching sincerely today
okay so the teacher did not have anything in mind that was the last lesson after that he was not there so he was actually teaching very sincerely and also very patiently how do you know he was very patient because he did not scold Franz when he entered the class okay so then students and others are actually studying with lot of sincerity okay so then Franz just uh, listens to uh, whatever is going on around the sounds and all he could hear so he can hear few uh, pigeons who, which were uh, cooing in the uh, in their nests so the time he thinks what if Prussia has occupied France will they be able to uh, make these pigeons go in German is it even possible he thinks so this is actually a very sarcastic comment okay the Prussian soldiers can force or the Prussian authorities can force the uh, occupied regions of France to uh, speak in uh, German okay German can be uh, just put on the levied on this uh, uh, people of uh, France but is it possible for them to change the nature that is not possible right so this was actually a very sarcastic comment and you can observe what kind of patriotism the author had towards the mother tongue okay so you cannot change anything right nature given you cannot change anything you can only force people to do it you can only just impose it on people or impose it on those who are able to receive it okay which is it has to be done with force only okay so that is what the author wants to say here okay so pigeons cannot go in German right so that is not possible for you to occupy France completely so that is what the uh, author's mindset was so at last what happens Hamel becomes very emotional he didn't he was not able to speak much he delivers all his lessons like here uh, the author uses a word babies also okay babies were actually reciting phonetics and all why is it so uh, he calls them as babies because phonetics are recited when uh, children are in a, at a very small age okay like pre-kg lkg ukg junior kg senior kg so like that so at that age uh, usually uh, phonetics is practiced okay so here the villagers actually start um, reciting uh, phonetics that uh, usage like that uh, practice uh, makes uh, the author feel that they are the babies fine so this act of procrastination has brought everybody to this stage okay so that is what the author tells over here then the uh, mr hamel was actually filled with emotions he was not able to speak he just stands up that day and that time franz feels that he is mr hamel is looking taller than ever before okay so he looks very tall because he is looking at the teacher with lot of respect okay so Franz is looking at Mr. Hamel with lot of respect now and so he is looking very tall and he is full of emotions he is not able to uh, teach further he starts uh, stammering then finally when he could not speak he just turns towards the wall he just leans at the wall and he just writes on the board long live Franz okay then he makes some towards the children that the class is dismissed you may leave so everybody leaves from there okay so he was not able to speak the last uh, phrase also okay so he was a patriot but uh, he could not express it because he was filled with emotions so all this is there in the last lesson isn't it a wonderful story very emotional right you can relate it to your country's patriotism also like what level of patriotism is expressed by the author here you can just feel it okay only thing when you read is you just have to be involved you need to put in lot of concentration so you can feel each and every line and I request you to read in between the lines what do you mean by reading in between the lines you need to understand the inner meaning also so when I say uh, like can pigeons go in German when you read it literally you cannot teach any pigeon to just go in German right so that is not possible but what is there you can understand that you can never uh, take away that patriotism that is there in our blood that is what the author is trying to say okay this actually has a hidden meaning fine so uh, all this you will be able to understand whenever you read in between the lines okay so this was all about the summary of this lesson that is the last lesson now we also have to understand the new words in this lesson so what are the new words that we have come across in this lesson so whenever you are reading this lesson i want you to uh, concentrate on these words okay so that you will be able to frame sentences and by framing sentences you will be able to understand the meaning properly 
okay so i want you to concentrate little uh, more on these words okay so first thing is in great dread of actually dread means the fear okay the fear in the mind is called as dread in great dread great dread means actually great it is too much okay so there is no fear there is nothing that is going to happen but you anticipate things you imagine things and you start developing some fear okay so in anticipation anticipation means you imagine something you are expecting something okay so you expect something you imagine something and you say that might happen and you are you fear of it okay so that is called as in great dread of okay so next one counted on you can count on me i counted on my friend for help so that means you can rely you can trust somebody for support fine that is the meaning given by counted on then we have thumbed at the edges okay so here there is one person there was a villager who had brought a, a book which was thumbed at the edges means it was a very old book at the edges it was actually folded crumbled and it was also torn you can just uh, imagine like the the old books when you bring it back when you want to use it again uh, you just turn then the edges will be little torn if the quality of the paper is not good or if you have not maintained properly then you can see that the edges will be crumbled okay the edges will be crumbled it will be folded fine so that is nothing but thumbed at the edges okay so worn or soiled worn means torn soiled means uh, which is dirty okay soiled means not very clean okay little brown brown kind of thing will appear at the edges right so that is called as soiled soiled edges caused by frequent handling it can be due to you keeping it in one place or maybe you use it again and again so that that also might be a reason for this worn out uh, thing okay so then we have in unison unison means uh, together okay like you recite tables in unison in the class okay so that is nothing but unison something that is happening or being done at the same time okay all of you in the class you recite tables together right that is in unison fine so then a great bustle bustle means that busyness some activity that has lot of noise hustle bustle as i said okay so there is lot of hustle bustle on sunday morning i say that means uh, in the city there might be lot of uh, movement of uh, vehicles or maybe some activity that is going on that involves lot of noise fine so that is called as a great bustle usually some excited activity will be going on and it will be noisy so that is the actual meaning of a great bustle then last one is the reproach is reproach reproach ourselves with this is actually a phrase reproach means to disagree to uh, criticize something okay you do not agree for something okay your mom says something you reproach from that your mom says we have to travel tomorrow i reproached you say fine so reproaching means to disagree or to show disappointment reproach ourselves with means you yourself disagree with something okay you express your discontentment towards something so these are the new phrases we have learnt in this story okay so yes thinking that this was a wonderful story it has appealed to you so much let us now move on to the next session so let us meet again in our next session with the lesson the lost spring so i'm going to come and meet you again so till then keep learning read the lesson any doubts we are always there on the live class to discuss and get the doubts clarified don't forget to come with the book and a pencil to get your doubts clarified so till then keep learning let us meet again very shortly in our next session that is the lost spring it's a really wonderful story that is the next session is will also be a wonderful one so let us meet shortly take care keep learning bye bye